Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Good Shabbos. As you can see, I'm standing in the midst of our magnificent art show by our students over here from first grade over here, kindergarten, and behind me, our seniors as well. It's all about family ties, and maybe that's why we have all of these ties. But family really is at the core of Judaism, and family is about what Temple Emmanuel is all about. We look at our Torah portion for this Shabbat. We're beginning a new book of the Torah. It's the third book. It's the book of Leviticus. It's the most difficult book. It's the law book. It's laws of sacrifice. Surprisingly, families first taught this book to their children because it was felt that even though it's difficult, sacrifice is a way of life, sacrifice is a way of Jewish life, and we know that nothing really ever worthwhile is accomplished without some form of sacrifice that we made in the past and we continue to make. It has been said, and I, I quote this, um, we sacrifice for what we believe in, and what we believe in we are. In this book, Vayikra, the, the first word, Vayikra, which means and he called, and God called, the Aleph at the end of Vayikra is much smaller than all the other letters. This doesn't happen that often in Torah, that one letter is so much smaller. We know that Torah begins with one letter so much bigger, the Bet. But it is said that because God calls, and sometimes we don't even hear it. It's a very slight call. It's a very quiet call. Uh, we may not even realize we're being called. But we have to listen carefully for the clues, the fact that God is all around us and God is in us. In Vayikra, in Leviticus, we read about sacrifices. And we're talking about the actual sacrifices, the animal sacrifices, the meal offerings, the grain offerings, the well-being sacrifices, the sin offerings, and even the guilt offerings. You see how far back Jewish guilt goes, all the way back to Leviticus. In any case, all of those sacrifices were abolished with the destruction of the temple in the year 70. And therefore, how were we to observe Judaism if we couldn't bring these prescribed sacrifices? And the answer lies in prayer and good deeds. You might think that for a thousand years, Jews worshipped in one way. They thought by bringing the sacrifices, it would bring them closer to God. And now things were being changed. I mean, they're not doing things the way we used to do things. So our people had to learn about prayer, structure of prayer, that there's an order of prayer, there's a siddur, and good deeds. In fact, God was saying, it's not so much what you say to me, it's what you actually do, your deeds, how you treat one another. Prayer is very difficult for us. Um, I meet people that say, you know, I don't know how to pray. I'm not sure I'm doing it right. I'm not sure God hears prayer. I'm not sure God responds to prayer. Actually, Rabbi Harold Kushner helps in this regard when he says, think about prayer in this way. Prayer is being in the presence of God. And it can change us. Prayer is about thankfulness, about being grateful for the things we already have. Prayer is really realizing that we're not alone and that we're never alone and we know that. And finally, prayer is about saying, I can't do everything in my life. I mean, there's certain things I cannot accomplish. That's when we put those things into what I call the God bag. So I want to invite you to your synagogue this Shabbat, this weekend, to view this magnificent art, which is an affirmation of family, to come on Friday night for our boomers-led Shabbat and pray with us and sing with us and hear Torah being read and be part of our great 
joy and realizing this is the way that we draw closer to God. And our service begins at 7.30 p.m. this Friday and come anytime to view this magnificent art. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.